Hey, what's going on guys? I'm Primal Liquid and welcome to my top 5 tips and tricks for Metal Gear Survive. So, uh, we'll start off with an easy one and one that I assume is going to be the most known of these and that is the Bomber Monster. Now, these guys are a pain in the arse. They're armoured, meaning you deal low damage to them unless you shoot them in the foot or the weak point on the back. Uh, the problem? They blow up after you kill them, meaning if you kill one in the extractor area or a place you've put barricades and turrets down, you can say bye bye to them. Uh, however, there is a way to kill them without them blowing up. Simply run behind them and use the melee action on them to stab the crystal on their back. When killing them this way, they don't actually explode, letting you protect your items that are placed in the nearby vicinity. Now, onto a lesser known one for number 4. Uh, ammo is precious in Survivor and also very limited. However, you can take a lot more ammo out with you thanks to your armour. When crafting armour, some PCs will have option part slots, which you can see at the bottom of the details page for that item. If you go into the customise menu and then select option parts, you can add magazine pouches, allowing you to take more ammo out with you into salvage missions, such as being able to take 390 assault rifle bullets instead of uh, just a normal 90. Likewise uh, with the other types of weapons and you can also change what shirts you have on behind your chest armor as well if you're uh, interested in that sort of thing. So uh, now that those two easy and simple ones are done let's move on to some of the more unknown. For number three it's going to be about the barricade item ramps. Now I often see people placing ramps in such a way around the extractor that we can get out of the area by just running up them. The problem is the, uh, the problem with this, however, is that when zombies start crowding around it, they can quite easily destroy the ramps this way, and then you get swarmed because of the time they had to gather together uh, before the ramp broke. But, if you place them the other way around, so that the zombies can walk up the ramps to get into the base, they'll actually fall off the top of the ramp, allowing you to effortlessly kill them with melee weapons while they're stuck on the ground. It also gives you a few seconds while they are in a stun state, meaning you won't get swarmed, making the defense much easier and smoother. If you happen to be using a bow and arrow, it also gives you a central location for you to gather all your arrows back without having to run around looking for them. Now, number two, uh, we move on to one that I've not really seen anybody mention yet, and that's being able to take crafting materials from your base into salvage missions, allowing you to craft a lot of stuff before the first wave even comes in. Meaning, if you want, you can take three turrets into the mission and enough materials to make another 30 turrets. So, before the first wave comes, you can have 33 turrets out and active. The downside to this though is any materials you take with you uh, will actually be lost after the mission. So only take what you know you're going to use. So how do you take the materials in? Uh, what you want to do first of all is head to either a crafting bench or the repository in your base and go to manage possessions. Move over to the materials tab and simply equip them. Uh, once equipped, they will be taken into the next mission with you, however, uh, do keep in mind they have a weight, and so if you take too many, you won't actually be able to sprint and you'll be moving at a snail's pace. You also won't be able to gather any materials from the map if you are completely full, well, if your inventory is completely full. So, for number one, uh, I figured I'd share the best and the fastest way to farm materials. No. Don't go S ranking missions. Uh, you actually have to get E ranks. So, uh, how do you do it? Uh, well, uh, you load up any salvage mission on solo, run straight through to the extractor and call it in. Once it's there, start the first wave right away. Now, once it starts to gather iris energy, you can interact with it and choose withdraw. What this does is it gives you the E rank reward, which depending on the difficulty, uh, could be anywhere between 500 materials to 1000 materials, and between 30,000 and 100,000 cuban energy. Each run takes a little over 2 minutes, meaning per hour you can earn uh, 20,000 materials and nearly 2 million cuban energy. Now, to speed this up, I suggest unequipping all of your gear so you can sprint for a lot longer and play on the highest difficulty mission available to you. The reason this is better than S ranks for materials is because uh, when you get an S rank, you do get slightly more materials. However, the missions can take upwards of 20 minutes, drastically reducing the amount you get per hour. Uh, finally, 
this will not work for gathering weapon plans and things like uh, barricade plans because they need higher ranks to even have a chance to drop. So this method is only viable for normal crafting materials such as gunpowder, steel, um, derillium, you know, things like that. But that's where I'm going to end the video guys. I hope you all enjoyed it and I hope it helps in some way. If you did enjoy it then hit that like button and leave a comment down below. But as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you later.